Villains fight heroes. This is a truism in superhero comic books. The reason for these conflicts can be as simple as the hero preventing them from committing a crime, all the way to the hero being the sole target for the villain's violence. But few are those villains who fight a hero just for the opportunity to be near them, fewer still because they want to be loved by them. Modius is one of these rare villains, and I can't wait to tell you more about him on this episode of Lesser Evils. Modius first appeared in Irredeemable No. 2 from 2009. Nothing about Modius' childhood is ever revealed except that when a pair of extraterrestrials arrived on Earth over 35 years ago, the young prodigy is brought in to develop a deadly radiation shield that successfully contains the aliens. What Modius did after that is equally a mystery, but at some point, he was tested for his tendency towards criminal behavior and earned the world's only perfect score. When the powerful new superhero calling himself the Plutonian appeared on the world scene, Modius discovered a subject that piqued his curiosity like nothing else. That curiosity slowly became a feeling that was completely new to him. Love, and then obsession. Once Modius began to understand what the emotions he was feeling for the first time were, all of his other distractions fell away as he looked to gain the attention of his would-be soulmate. The emotionally stunted Modius only knew how to show his affection by repeatedly attacking the Plutonian. Never knowing why Modius was attacking him, Plutonian was simply confused as to why the villain had fixated on him so singularly. Everything changed the day Modius attempted yet again to murder Plutonian's girlfriend using a bomb planted in her apartment. This time, Plutonian was able to track the signal of the bomb back to Modius' lair, where he is shocked to discover the villain working on perfect cybernetic duplicates of the Plutonian. After Modius is captured, Plutonian examines the lab with his super senses, where he realizes that Modius was in love with him and that the robots were intended for sex. For the second time in Modius' life, he feels an emotion, but this time it was the horror of his deepest secret being known. Modius would then disappear for years while secretly studying magic. He would utilize the talents of another magic villain, a sorceress known as Encanta, who helped guide the villain to the spell he was looking for. Encanta then watched as Modius transformed into packets of data before disappearing into a hole in space. The last thing Modius says to her is that he will be going to the safest place on Earth. That place turned out to be the body of Plutonian's sidekick, the immortal teen Samsara. Unfortunately, Modius never gets a chance to enact whatever it is he was planning after the Plutonian inadvertently causes the deaths of thousands of children. When the Plutonian's culpability in the disaster was made public, Samsara is the first to question Plutonian and how his friend could do such a thing. This causes Plutonian to snap and use his laser vision to fry Samsara's brain, making him the first victim of Plutonian's heel turn. The Plutonian's subsequent rampage around the world kills millions of people. The Plutonian's former allies in the superhero team The Paradigm suffer alongside the world as many of their number are killed by their former friend. In order to stop the Plutonian, the Paradigm's tech genius, known as Cubit, realizes they need the help of the long-missing Modius. In order to find the man, Cubit builds a group of robotic Modii trained to think like the villain, all of them tasked with trying to figure out where the real Modius is. The Modius robots eventually accomplish their task and deduce that Modius can be found in the Plutonian's secret base. While the Paradigm are distracted coming up with a plan, the Modius robots quietly scatter through Cubit's lab. The team quickly searches the lab and destroys the robots, finding the very last one had used a plutonian alert device and now the former hero is speeding to their location. Cubit grabs up the still functioning head of the last Modius robot before the team escapes through a portal. In the plutonian's secret volcano base, the Paradigm member known as Bette Noir discovers the plutonian's creepy obsession with her after their one-time hookup. The team also find the captured villainous Encanta, who is dressed as the previously mentioned Bet Noir. The team catches a break when a member of the Paradigm gains a power boost that allows that hero to overpower the Plutonian, causing the former hero to retreat from the battle and find comfort in the grave of his former friend Samsara. To the Plutonian's surprise, the gem in Samsara's head begins to glow and the young man appears to miraculously revive. Acting like Samsara, Modius greets Plutonian, who is happy to see his friend alive. The two then embrace, Modius smiling in his sinister way. After his apparent resurrection, Modius gets to see how the Plutonian has changed when the former hero attempts to take food from a gas station and then murders a man after hearing him cock his gun. As the Plutonian debates what the pair's next step is going to be, Modius asks Plutonian to trust him to find a solution that will make everything right again. 
Modius eventually convinces the Plutonian to visit the home of his first adoptive family. After the Plutonian reveals his abandonment issues, he sends his young friend out of the house before he murders his former parents, much to Modius' great joy. Elsewhere, Modius uses magic to kidnap the sorceress Encanta from Cubit's lab, along with the body of a comatose member of the Paradigm. Both of them are then watched over by one of Cubit's Modius robots, patiently waiting for some next step. When the Paradigm and their temporary ally, who's a fucking demon, prepare for the coming battle with the Plutonian, they are interrupted by the arrival of Modius wearing Simsara's body. The young man reveals that the Plutonian is on his way and is very angry, moments before the mass murderer arrives with a bang and all hell breaks loose when the fighting begins. During the battle, the Paradigm members not fighting note that Samsara should be dead. They even talk to the young man's corpse in the first issue of the book. Modius sidesteps an explanation, reminding them that he could resurrect himself. The hero's investigation is halted as the battle turns against the Plutonian. Modius, as Samsara, attempts to stop the fight, claiming that he can talk the Plutonian down. When he is ignored, Modius convinces the electricity-controlling superhero called Volt to help instead. The pair arrive at a nearby cliff edge, and Volt finds nothing. When Modius calls Volt an idiot, the hero realizes that the person he's speaking to isn't Samsara. Modius then shoves Volt off the cliff and follows after. At the same time, the Paradigm and their demon ally have the Plutonian on the ropes. When Bette Noir fires a special bullet strengthened by her powers, Cubit teleports the bullet towards the demon, killing it instead. Before the Plutonian can return to fighting the remaining heroes, he hears Samsara call out for his help, and he flies away. The Plutonian arrives and discovers that his young friend has survived the fall, unlike Volt. Modius acts scared and insists that the pair leave as the Paradigm arrive and mourn their dead teammate. Readers next see Modius as he floats in the middle of the road and causes a distracted father driving with his family to crash his car in an attempt to avoid the young man. As the father scrambles to save his family trapped in the car, Modius watches on showing no interest. Plutonian soon arrives to check on his friend who claims to have been trying to help the poor family. Modius watches as the grieving father begs Plutonian to help, only for the former hero to mock the father's tragic mistake. As the pair watch rescue workers help the family, Modius questions Plutonian about what he really wants and introduces the idea of undoing some of the murders he was responsible for. At Samsara's home, Modius retrieves a magical sapphire that the Plutonian had retrieved the day he murdered his young friend and claims that with it they can resurrect those the Plutonian had killed. When the Plutonian feels regret about killing Samsara, the sidekick assures his friend that everything is fine between them. The pair return to the first city the Plutonian had wiped out at the beginning of his rampage, and Plutonian uses the gem to no effect. The Plutonian reluctantly notes that the one man who could help them, that was smarter than Cubit, was Modius. He then recounts how he discovered Modius's obsession with him, and how the man was never seen again. Modius half-heartedly suggests that his former self actually hated the Plutonian, but is surprised when it is revealed that the Plutonian knows that it is really Modius wearing Samsara's body. The Plutonian notes how clever Modius had been to hide inside Samsara, but his emotionless voice gave him away. Modius begins to get nervous, but the Plutonian tells his young friend to relax. Plutonian notes that he could never hurt somebody with Samsara's face, before using his laser vision to incinerate that same face. His skin smoking, Modius runs off blindly into the ruins of the destroyed city. With his current body ruined for his purposes, Modius' robotic duplicate arrives with friends. The digitized Encanta transforms Modius into Data and sends it into the robotic counterpart who describes how he feels better now. While Modius regroups and plans again, events go full-blown comic book event when the Plutonian is captured by extraterrestrials called the Vespa, who the heroes had made a deal with in the past for just this occasion. In his base, the now robotic Modius tries to replicate his feelings for the Plutonian, using his pet coma patient as a mannequin for cosplay, but the kiss doesn't produce the response he seeks, and is instead as cold as he feels in the moment. Modius then prepares to upload his mind into the brain-dead hero's body, but stops and realizes that his robotic body means his heart can never be broken again. Now seeing the situation as a problem to solve, Modius plans to rescue the Plutonian, but determines that he needs Cubit's help to do so. Initially unsure of Modius' suggestion of cooperation, Cubit's opinion changes after seeing how the Paradigm's new leader wants to handle things. 
Cupid's only demand is that Modius does not hurt a teammate of his. Unbeknownst to Cupid, Modius was already a step ahead and had already captured the teammate just in case. Modius mocks the hero scientist for caring so much about a single life before the pair visit the alien Vespa on one of their worlds and demand to know what their leaders did with the Plutonian. The Vespin representative doesn't take kindly to the human's demands until Cubit teleports in the front half of a Vespin battleship with the press of a button, threatening to shut down the portal network for their entire empire, which is based off of his work. Cubit demands they answer Modius's question. After receiving the information they wanted, even Modius is impressed by Cubit's ruthlessness. While traveling between dimensions, Modius reveals to Cubit how he learned the Plutonian's powers work and his ability to manipulate matter and energy subconsciously. Learning this, Cubit questions why he hadn't figured it out before, until Modius reveals that he had, but Modius kept removing the knowledge from Cubit's mind using a custom flu virus. The pair eventually teleport into the control room of the prison planet that is holding the Plutonian. They attempt to question the panicked workers, who reveal that the Plutonian had built a gang of escapees and is fighting his way to their current location. The scared overseers of the prison soon evacuate the planet, allowing Cubit and Modius access to the alien's computer systems. While they wait, Cubit notes that Modius really does love the Plutonian. Modius replies that the Plutonian is a perfect being worthy of his affection, and he believes that the Plutonian loves him too, but just can't bring himself to accept it. Modius then reveals that the reason he tolerates working with Cubit is because the scientist saved the Plutonian's life when the rest of his teammates were prepared to kill him. When the Plutonian and his prison gang arrive, their entrance sends Modius and Cubit sprawling. Plutonian is surprised to see Cubit in what he believes is a Modius robot. Modius frantically tells Plutonian how he is the real one and has come to his rescue. Surprisingly, the Plutonian embraces Modius and the criminal genius promises to take them home. Plutonian wastes no time ordering his crew to kill Cubit, but the hero is a step ahead with a powerful force field. Cubit then shuts down all the teleport technology in the galaxy, stranding the group of them on the planet. The Plutonian counters this using one of his gang's time jumping powers, and the group successfully teleports to Earth. After the gang disappears and leaves Cubit stuck on the planet, the robot of Modius goes silent before it begins falling to pieces, the villain's mind having jumped into the body of an escapee called Cutter, whose claws can telekinetically cut others around her. After returning to Earth, Plutonian tries to celebrate with Cutter, but becomes angry when she no longer seems able to hurt the Plutonian the way she did when they were on the prison planet, unaware that it is Modius in her body. When the Plutonian and his gang battle the new paradigm made up of villains, Modius effortlessly decapitates one of their members using her body's powers and watches as the new paradigm turn on their leader. Later that evening, as the Plutonian and his crew enjoy themselves by hurling the former paradigm members into space, Plutonian asks Cutter to make a wish, but he doesn't have an answer. Following this, the Plutonian and his crew surprise Bette Noir, who had been partying like it's the end of the world. The Plutonian reveals to his team how Bet had tried to kill him. When Bet tells her one-time lover to just kill her, Plutonian instead kisses Bet passionately. Modius becomes upset seeing this and uses his body's powers to hurt Plutonian. Happy to see that Cutter's back on brand, Plutonian states that the three of them will have fun. At the Plutonian's current base in a destroyed city, Bet Noir attempts to end her life twice but is saved both times by the Plutonian. When Modius asks what their group's greater purpose is, Plutonian flies off saying he needs to think about it. The Plutonian's thinking turns into a discovery of his origins, that he was created by the aliens captured over 30 years ago, and how their recent release had unleashed a radiation cloud that was going to end the world. The Plutonian then teams up with Cubit to better understand his abilities in order to prevent the coming radioactive apocalypse. While the Plutonian is gone, Modius rides an elevator with Bette Noir to the top of a skyscraper. The two have a debate about what the Plutonian is thinking, Bet believing Plutonian regretted his decision to bring the prisoners to Earth, while Modius counters that the Plutonian finally has people who really understand him. At the end of their conversation, Bet turns to leap off the skyscraper roof, but is stopped by Modius who begins to describe Bet as the perfect vehicle with which to make him mine. After transferring his being into Bet Noir, Modius throws the unsuspecting Cutter Noir off the building to her death and he smiles as he watches his latest victim fall. In Bet's body, Modius begins manipulating the other members of the Plutonian's gang, transforming one of the aliens into a bomb and sending the other to kill the remaining members of the Paradigm. When the Plutonian eventually realizes that Modius had returned to Earth in Cutter's body, 
he immediately abandons Cubit and flies off to save Bet from Modius. While waiting for the Plutonian to arrive, Modius mocks how Bet Noir's control of gravity was wasted on her shooting super bullets. And as the Plutonian approaches his location like a comet, Modius uses his new body's powers to grab his obsession out of the air and forces the Superman to crash to the ground. The Plutonian struggles just to get to his feet as Modius consumes various drugs to unlock even more potential with his new powers. When the Plutonian finally smashes his way to Modius, the Mastermind casually greets the new arrival with a joke. As Modius begins to notice the changes the Plutonian has clearly gone through, the Plutonian counters and reveals that he knows he is talking to Modius. Using his new abilities to look through Modius' memories, Plutonian sees him murder Bet Noir. Modius justifies this murder by explaining how he has made himself into the perfect mate for the Plutonian in both body and soul. With the Plutonian locked in his gravitational powers, Modius does what he has always wanted and kisses the man of his dreams passionately. Using more power, Modius forces the Plutonian to the ground, the act causing a massive explosion in the already wrecked city. With much effort, the Plutonian pushes Modius away, demanding the sick man never touch him. Modius becomes even more confused when the Plutonian then threatens to kill him. With genuine tears streaming from his eyes, Modius counters that he isn't sick, he just knows what he wants. Modius then slams into the Plutonian, begging him to stop pushing him away. Modius describes how he can use Bet's abilities to reach across space for power. That every punch the Plutonian makes against him is killing entire star systems as Modius snuffs out their suns for fuel. With his new power, Modius knows how to tame the Plutonian, because he knows the Plutonian better than anyone. When a beaten Plutonian mentions the deadly radiation cloud that will end the world, Modius replies dismissively, So, mine ends every time you turn away. Fuck, I love comics. As far as Modius is concerned, let the world burn. He has received the prize that he worked so hard to earn. The Plutonian weakly threatens to kill Modius again, but the villain notes how the Plutonian can't seem to hurt Bet Noir like he did Samsara. Mounting the Plutonian, Modius is in ecstasy as he makes his twisted dreams come true. At the conclusion of their session, Modius is satisfied and describes the effort it took to make her body survive the experience, but looks forward to it getting easier in the future. As Modius gloats, he notices his limbs begin to appear in different locations as a pissed off Cubit teleports onto the scene. Moments before Cubit can kill Modius for murdering his friend Bet, the villain reveals the bomb made from the alien inmate. The explosion completely nukes the ravaged city, but the Plutonian and Cubit manage to survive anyway. The pair are surprised when Cubit is shot by Modius, who is slowly pulling himself back together. Modius mocks Cubit for not thinking ahead as he batters the hero's shields. He listens to Cubit beg the Plutonian for help, but his former ally sees no way to do that and stands aside. When Cubit's wrist device overloads and his protective energy shield shatters, Modius mocks the scientist and his hypocritical principles of not killing. The Plutonian then teases Cubit, asking if the scientist wants him to kill Modius instead. Begrudgingly, Cubit confesses that he does, leading to a surprise move as the Plutonian attacks Modius with his heat vision. Moments before his body is destroyed, Modius looks to Cubit and transfers his mind into the scientist's brain as he has done many times before. For a few moments, Modius stands triumphant until he realizes that he has been tricked and has fallen into a trap. A mental version of Cubit explains how this was always the plan. Cubit couldn't let Modius die because he needed the villain's knowledge. Reaching out, Cubit takes the knowledge of the deadly radiation, leaving one of his eyes now digitized as Modius's had been. In the real world, Cubit reveals to the Plutonian that Modius lives in his head now, and if the Plutonian tries to kill him, he will be the next body Modius takes over. With Modius's knowledge, the pair go on to save the world. That was in 2012, and Modius has not appeared again since. So why do I like Modius and think he is worth taking a look at? Despite Modius being a heartless monster who lacked any sort of conscience, he was a character that I couldn't help but pity just a bit. Imagine how you felt the first time you developed a crush on someone. Now magnify that by the intensity of a remorseless psychopath with an unparalleled intellect. Where a typical person might crack a joke to get another's attention, Modius used the only tools he appeared to be familiar with, violence and terror. Reading Irredeemable, it came off to me like Modius could have killed the Plutonian at any point. 
He claimed to understand the hero like no one else, surprising Plutonian with all sorts of plots and plans. When it became clear that his real body was not the one that Plutonian was attracted to, Modius was ready and willing to change himself for the sake of his love. Whether it was Samsara, or Cutter, or Bet Noir, Modius appeared more than willing to be whoever he thought the Plutonian would want, as long as the Plutonian wanted him. When the Plutonian was taken away from him by the Vespa, Modius showed unexpected humility by asking for Cubit's help when his own extraordinary talents were not enough. Despite his dismissal of the scientist, Modius had to acknowledge that he owed Cubit for saving the Plutonian's life when everybody else called for his death. Finally, through sheer determination, Modius made himself into the perfect mate for the Plutonian, with a body that the Superman was deeply attracted to, and with the power needed to control the godlike target of his affections. Despite these advantages though, Modius still wanted nothing more than for the Plutonian to accept him freely. It is only when the Plutonian rejected Modius for the last time that readers see the heartbroken man as he truly was. The monster who will take what he wants ignoring even the world ending disaster facing the planet. A man who would dominate and abuse the person he claimed to love when their twisted obsession wasn't returned. I think Modius was a villain who had a depth that was easy to overlook. At first glance, you could see him as another character in the angry genius archetype. But it doesn't take long for readers to see a character who was deeply broken and who sought for someone to want him. And despite being able to solve any equation with his gifted intellect, Modius could never find the solution for how to make the Plutonian love him. Ultimately, with the Plutonian gone at the end of Irredeemable, I would love to see Modius return in a sequel. A villain now undistracted by his obsession and ready to show the world why he was the only thing that their most powerful hero was truly afraid of.